The world is watching because joining us, a man who's gone back to back in the MVP voting of the biggest league in the history of Earth. His future is one that everybody is speculating upon daily. Ladies and gentlemen, friend of the program, founder of the Aaron Rodgers Book Club, host of Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah! Hey, what's up, dude? What's up, Green. bro? Earthlings. What's going on, dude? How you doing, man? Looking good. You got that You got that glow. Thank you. I appreciate that. I try to get a little Hawaiian sun, have a good time. You know all about that one off season ago. That's all we could talk about is you in Hawaii jumping off of waterfalls. And let's kind of chat about that. Now that we're a couple weeks removed from the season, you've won your second MVP. You look back on the entire year that was, you're just thoughts now that you're a little bit away from it. Is there any different thoughts than you had maybe a couple weeks ago after we talked about your loss? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think it's, you know, let me just put this disclaimer out right away for the the uh, the few people watching that are tuning in just for a specific uh, maybe news or decision. There will be no news today, no decision on, on my future. Uh, as I was texting with you yesterday, I just got out of a 12-day Panchakarma. Uh, look that up. Uh, I know you did after we talked. Uh, <laughs> but it's a... Plans that are, you know originated in India has been going on for thousands of years, and it's something I've done in the off season. So I'm just getting my head above above the sand now and uh, seeing what's going on out there. But um, but no decision about my future today. So all you just do hold for on, that. No, hold on, hold on, now, hold on, hold on. Fresh out of the Pancha Karma, you had to you had to think about your decision. Now, obviously, no decision is being made, and that is. 100% okay, and by the way, your life, your world, people are gonna be mad at you for it because they were expecting it. That's on them, not on you. But have you thought about that anymore? I assume that has to be all you're thinking about, or no, are you trying to compartmentalize everything? All I'm thinking about? <laughs> uh, no, buddy, there's there's other things going on, like doing Pancha Karma. Um, but no, uh, the off season, I feel like kind of you know, it begins when your season ends uh, on paper, but it really starts to begin once the Super Bowl is over. And, you know, I started this this PK before, you know, during Super Bowl week, so I was actually on it, you know, when I when I won the MVP the other night. But uh, but that's when the offseason starts to, starts to take place, I think, after the Super Bowl, and you start to, you know, think about the next season and, for me, my future. Um, and so there's been, you know, some definitely some contemplative days, but... Um, you know, I, I understand also today, I believe, might be the first day to tag players. And, you know, in Green Bay, there's this one specific guy who's like the best guy in the entire league at what he does. <laughs> you know, whereas like, I think number 17, you might have heard of him. Uh, so there's, you know, there's there's obviously, uh, you know, the opportunity to tag him at some point, which, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think, you know. Both parties probably want that done. They'd rather get a long-term extension done. But I understand that's a part of the decision, and I talked about, you know, not wanting to, to drag this thing out. But, um, but you know, you and I have, uh, you know, and the boys and an age who's, you know, lost at sea right now, I think. Uh, <laughs> but we got such a good relationship. I, I, I did definitely want to, you know, I love being on the show, and it's fun to, but we didn't have a good recap of the season, I don't think, you know, the, without the emotion in it, without the, the frustration of a loss, and, and uh, so I'm happy to be back on with you guys again. For those just joining, flip off unless you enjoy, you know, the Tuesdays, the normal Tuesdays, because you're not going to have anything to write a headline about, I don't think. Well, bullshit. There's going to be a lot. <laughs> yeah. Headlines are already being wrote right now, buddy. Every time you speak, that happens, and obviously you're referencing Devontae there. Let's talk about the season. You guys had another magical, magical year, and you were on uh, PK while you accepted another MVP award. Uh, when you're up there and you're giving your speech, great speech, by the way, more than your 35 seconds last year. Yeah, that was nice. More than your 35 seconds last year on a cell phone, which was awesome. Great speech. Is there, you, you immediately led off with thanking the Green Bay Packers organization. And all year, it felt like you've chatted about your teammates a lot on this show, a lot about the teammates, how much you love them. Your Instagram post last night, like so thankful for your teammates and for everybody in your life. The gratitude seems to be real. How come you think everybody just assumes all that is bullshit and it's all out of spite? Like your post last night, everybody's like, oh, this is a cryptic message meaning something. Like, why do you think that is the case, Aaron? Honestly, do you, do you, and do you think about that with everything you say and do? Do you have to think about that? 
I would. I don't. I don't think about that before I, I post something like that. And, and I think, you know, unless you've gone through certain experiences, um, and had you know, uh, frustration and 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 been near the bottom and then get near the top and understand the uh, the beauty in life and, uh, I think that's then you might say things about that. That's a cryptic message. I mean, there's nothing cryptic about gratitude. You know, I just came out of a 12-day cleanse where you're eating a specific diet and you're going through these treatments every day and you're not really doing anything else. you got to kind of turn everything else off and, and so, you know, you're not working out, you're not straining or anything. It's kind of a recentering, um, and, and it not only heals you physically, but I think it takes away mental stress and, and then the spiritual part, I think it allows you to kind of enjoy the meditations a little bit more. So when I come out, my first thought is, just intense gratitude for the people in my life. And that's not every person in my life that I mentioned, and, and there's other people to, to highlight in the credit, but that was just where I was at. I was going through some old pictures from the last year and felt an intense amount of gratitude uh, for the life that I have and for the lessons that I've learned and the growth that's happened over the last year and the people who've been a part of that, uh, that journey. I think it's a great jump off point for the recap of the year because one of the photos was actually the last photo and it was a photo of Randall Cobb and then a space and then Devontae Adams. And the internet, obviously, and the people who are your detractors uh, were saying, oh, this means he's done, he's gone. And it sounds like you legitimately do not have your decision yet, although you might be leaning one way or another. You're a human. In my eyes, when I saw this photo, it was you actually saying thanks to them for thinking about you when you weren't there. Am I wrong in reading that? Or is that exactly why you posted that? Is that it? First of all, you're exactly right. And, and you know, full transparency, when I got that message, I cried. You know, when I got that photo from from Randall and Devante, you know, it, it brought tears to my eyes. Because that's my guy standing before the game, right? Randall's always on my right, Tay's on my left, and I embrace with both of them after the anthem. And it's it's a part of the pregame ritual, but also just a, a statement about friendship and love and, and the connection that, that we have uh, collectively and, and individually in our own friendships. And, you know, they held space and, and an open spot for me the game I missed because of my positive COVID test. And that got me, man. And that's one of my favorite photos from the year. It, it really is because it just shows the love and, the, and, and how special each of those moments are. So that's, you know, that's one of my all-time favorite photos. And, and the thought that went into doing that was, man, deep, deeply moving to me. And, and especially with you know, how crazy that week was, to get that photo after the game from them was, it got me. Okay, so that that's great to hear, by the way, and I'm sure there's going to be people on the internet. Oh, obviously, there's a deeper meaning, uh, <laughs> you know, than what he's saying. And he's always, but that's kind of how it goes. And it feels like from talking to you this season, and by the way, this was not an easy season for anybody, right? With COVID, with all the protocols in the NFL. But I mean, you, granted, it started with the entire off season being what it was then coming in with the immunize you not wanting to be a poster boy for this entire thing then you're getting thrust in the middle and i got to see some of it man you were getting killed i mean you were getting killed by people but it seemed like every time you came and talked to us and every time your your teammates talked about you it felt like life was just it, it was almost as good as it could potentially ever be in the midst of all that felt like you were the happiest you've ever been the more comfortable you've ever been the most confident you've ever been playing it feels like happiness was something you continued to have through a season that was very chaotic on and off the field for you do you think about why that is how that is and how do you continue to duplicate that hopefully when times are a little bit quieter maybe in the future well, I'd like to see quieter times for sure moving forward <laughs> <laughs> it was loud it was loud out there you know, a lot of people have asked me, you know, and it was it was a dialogue talking point last year. You know, like why would you? you you've been you've been your happiest the last couple of years. Why would you even think about, you know, retiring? It's you know the happiest you've been. You look so happy on the field and at work and different things. And and I would say I think you're missing a big a big part of it. I think, you know, as professional athletes and and people in general, I think we all need to do some sort of compartmentalization in our lives, you know, all times. We need to kind of set some things aside uh, and, and be able to focus on something else from time to time. And, and I think as players, you know, we're always uh, doing that to some extent uh, in, in seasons, you know, whether there's 
you know, the professional is, is difficult or the personal is difficult from time to time. There's some compartmentalization of the energy uh, of those environments that has to kind of stay where it's at in order to, to do your job. And there's been years I've played really good with, you know, work environment maybe not being the best or personal life, you know, going through some struggles uh, and, and vice versa at times where works, you know, where home life's been great and work's been difficult or home life's been rough and work's been great where you can still play well because there's compartmentalizing. But what happens, I think, when, when the home life is so great uh, it, it, and the work life is, is good as well, it allows you to have work be a bonus. So work is no longer a refuge or home is no longer a refuge huh. where you have to get away from a certain environment to be able to thrive. When you're thriving at home and, and loving work, you know, work just becomes icing on the cake. And, you know, I was, I was teasing with, uh, with Matt uh, before, and I mentioned in my speech, uh, you know, two, three years together, two MVPs, there's no coincidences. Um, and I also was telling Shay, you know, I've been with you for two seasons, won two MVPs. Like, that's not a coincidence either. And I mean that, you know, when, when your home life is stable, and you have uh, an amazing partner to, to do life with, it just makes the work life a bonus. And it, it changes the perspective because you're able to not look at work as like a refuge. Yeah. It's like, uh, how much more fun can I have at work now? Now that the stress you know, of, of, of personal life stuff is, is out of there, how much more enjoyment can I get out of work? What areas can I focus on to... Uh, to enjoy more, the bus rides, the meeting rooms, times to put your phone away and enjoy the locker room conversations. I think that's a huge part of it. I really do. And and, and to that extent, it's interesting, I think, how things are, are often pictured for professional athletes where you know, significant others are so often looked at as maybe possible distractions or reasons why things went a certain way when, to be honest, it's usually the opposite. You know, it, it, if you... if if you play bad or make it or, or have a rough stretch, it's on you. It's on you and your hmm. and your and your habits and and what's going on most of the time. Well, if you're sore and they never say, oh, you know, let's give credit to that woman behind the man. You know what I mean? And I, I think that's a it's kind of a bizarre fad I see in our culture. And uh, you know, I know for me, it's been great uh, the last two seasons to have that stability at home. And I think about. The other wives, uh, you know, of my teammates who are just rock stars. You know, Mason Crosby's wife, you know, Molly, they got five kids. I mean, she's a boss lady. Like, she <laughs> handles that. Make sure that, you know, what the women give up to be to be uh, wives and girlfriends, you know, of, of, of just uh, let's talk about our sport, is, is a lot. I mean, you're sacrificing. You're moving across the country a lot of times or moving to Green Bay. You know, with our weather, we got there. You're sacrificing something, you know, career-wise, life-wise, freedom, attention. Kids, my, you know, yeah. and I think about I think about uh, coaches' wives. I mean, you know, no, like no the coaches' schedule is is crazy what they do. And I've got to know three amazing, amazing coaches' wives over the last few years, and Bree Lafleur, and Tina Getze, and Megan Hackett. And those are three amazing women. I mean, they, there's ten kids between them, and those their men are at work a bunch. In the season, they don't see them a whole lot. They got to be the homemaker, the meal maker, the taxi driver, you know, holding everything together, doing all the projects on the house. And for some of these guys, and we know with coaches, you know, they've been on scholarship the whole life. They can't even do some of these mundane details. I think about AJ. I was going to talk about him. He's not on here, but he can barely tie his shoes, more or less. <laughs> I mean, boss about Laura Hawk. Yeah. You know, what's, you know, but the but the women in our lives are, are are what allow us to have that clarity. I think when when things are good in your personal life, in your relationships, your friendships, your loved ones, it allows you to just relax and 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 be so much more grateful. I think for the little things in life. And uh, big shout out to all the women backing up uh, backing up the fellas. Hey, shout out! Shout out! Shout out. Now, obviously, um, I have known of Shailene's uh, existence in your world. 
Obviously, I've known of that via the internet and everything. We've never talked about it, though, right? Because I have, I'm not somebody that, you know, wants to delve into people's personal shit. Like, I, I just don't think that is something that is real. Hearing you talk about being with Shailene for the last two seasons and winning two MVPs, that's no coincidence. You've also, in your eyes, you think you've been a very, do you think Shailene is the biggest initiative on this new movement? Like, the book club, the books that you had read, and the PK and everything like that, and the way, have you found yourself, you think, via Shailene in your relationship with her? Is that something that you would say? You would say, is, has she changed you and shaped you, you think, a lot? Oh, yeah, I mean, without a doubt. I mean, I mean I've learned, uh, learned so much from her. Uh, she's just an incredible woman, talented, smart, kind. Uh, you know, I said last night, you know, taught me what unconditional love looks like, and that's a great gift. You know, when you, uh, when you have a partner like that, it just makes life so much more enjoyable, you know, and, and, and tasteful and exciting. And, and, you know, I think, I think that, Living a life of gratitude is such an important, important way to keep that joy in your life. And, you know, when you meet your person, life just changes. And you can't possibly not be changed being around those special people that we meet. Um, friendships can do that. Relationships can do that. And it just, you're never the same because you know that uh, you can't be because these people that, that we get to have in our lives inspire us and push us and and give us that unconditional love but but also the tough love that we need you know it's it's people that hold our feet to the fire and and celebrate you know our successes and back us up when we need to be backed up and you know all the things uh, that we would ever want and whether and it's not just Shay it's it's friendships as well that that have been tested and I think that's one thing again, that through uh, contemplation and kind of getting away from the whole season, I think, you know, one thing that, that I am sad about and, I, and, and definitely uh, apologetic is, is I didn't realize in the midst of, of the COVID conversations how much my situation was affecting my loved ones and uh, my people. Uh, the people that support me and love me and, and check on me and take care of me. I didn't realize the kind of shrapnel that was kind of being uh, flaked off of what I felt like were the bullets coming at me because I was too locked in on me and defending myself and trying to get a message out. I never wanted to be divisive in, in this whole thing. I really didn't. Um, the issue is polarizing. I get that. Uh, and I know there's a lot of fear involved around it, uh, but I, my intention was never to be divisive. It was to, to speak what was my truth and talk about you know, my own health. Um, but I, I am very sorry to those, those people, uh, you know, Shay and my loved ones and my, and my agents, uh, you know, Ed and Dave and you and the boys and my close friends like AJ and and my teammates and the organization, my sponsors, you know, th this, I didn't realize the kind of shrapnel they'd be taking. And so many people stepped up to the plate and sent me, you know, great messages of support and, and love. But I think I realized being out of this now and having conversations with, with some of those people, uh, understanding kind of the entire gravity of, the situation I was thrust into and and decided to speak on multiple times, you know, had an effect on a lot of people. And so to those people, I just say, I'm sorry. Like, I, I, I never meant to get you in the middle of it, but you got into it by proxy because of your relationships with me. And I love you guys. I appreciate the support. That goes to you and the boys as well. You know, they were questioning, uh, you know, your ability to do a show and, and to ask questions and, and by association, you know, the boys are a part of that as well. And AJ is a part of that. And Laura. And then that friend group and those people that talk to them and the people that supported me publicly or privately having to answer questions about what they felt about me and my status and what I said. And that was a lot. I realized the gravity and the depth of that. A lot for my agents, a lot for my sponsors, a lot for my friends, my teammates, the questions it created. 
and I do have a lot of uh, feelings of uh, hey of, of remorse for that. Hey, I think that's pretty cool, man. That's super yeah. adult of you, by the way. Super duper adult of you to acknowledge that. Now, with that being said, I mean, there was really, with the decision you had made about your uh, vaccination status, I mean, it was a perfect recipe for, you know, in which the NFL's MVP, the vaccination, which is becoming super po uh, pol political. And by the way, I was a vaccinated person in the middle of that whole thing during that entire thing. But there is, it was an interesting situation that I don't think will ever happen again. It'll be tough to explain why it happened to like 10, 15 years from now. I think it'll be tough to explain that entire thing. But that, and that, by the way, I did not expect this conversation to go this way. Let's show range here on the first day back. Aaron, mm -hmm. when you found out, you know, about all that, was that during this PK cleanse? Was this immediately after the season? And whenever, the, does that, that had to be a bit overwhelming whenever you started thinking about everything and, and realizing from like a 30,000 foot view. Is that real? Yeah, I think so. I think when you're in it, there's so many charged emotions associated with it. You just feel like I'm in this, I need to ride this out. And I knew that I was, you know, up to the task, but this thing kind of just kept going and going and going and going. And, um, I guess until I got to have some of those conversations post season, when things started to calm down a little bit, um, and you start to have a better perspective on what happened and think about things maybe outside of your own self and set your ego aside a little bit uh, and have some empathy, it really starts to sink in the gratitude, the intense, intense gratitude for those people that reached out and supported me uh, and, and sent me messages of love and, 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 and strength and kindness, but also realizing that they were in it as well and they had to answer questions just like I had to answer questions and they had to justify their relationship with me or friendship with me uh, just how I had to justify the things that I was talking about so this was a lot bigger than me and you know what I have I have love and empathy for for the other side as well I mean this is there's so much fear that is charged into this conversation and very divisive and very political like you said um, but I have a lot of love and empathy for, for people that don't believe the same things that I believe, you know, and, and I enjoy those conversations. Um, yeah, but Aaron, that's not real life nowadays, dude. Hopefully we'll get to a point where people can disagree and move along. And I've tr I tried to say this in a certain way. Uh, like the NFL locker room taught me that you can disagree with somebody and then, ah, oh, all right, fuck it. And then just move on yeah. because there's more to do. But the world seems to not do that. Now, hopefully we will get back to a point where we can have those conversations, especially as we remove ourselves from, well, hope, right, listen, well, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Tread lightly. We'll see. Who knows? But it feels like we may be. Maybe. Maybe. Perhaps. No, we did not. We okay. did not. But anyways, okay. as we beat COVID at some point, hopefully. And move along. I think it'll make because everybody with a fear of death, and you're killing me, and I'm killing you, and there's this. I mean, that is to your point about the fear thing. It, it was massive. I, I, I really appreciate and enjoy the fact of you talking about the way you just experience life, basically for somebody else. And it, looking back on it, you're an incredibly smart person. You see how it all goes. And I don't. Want, I don't want to. I mean, you just put over uh, this man's wife alongside a couple other people's wife. But like Lafleur through that entire thing. What a fucking, you know, because he does have great eyebrows. He does. Unbelievable. He has great yeah. eyebrows, okay? And you guys have won two MVPs together out of three. But he had to get up there and answer questions. And the NFL is, you know, big business, big conglomerate, big business. And I think the way LaFleur handled that entire thing, at some point, I assume, during your entire analysis of the season, you had to be pretty grateful for as well. Because that dude went up there, he didn't piss off the locker room, didn't piss off Jordan Love, and he still had your back while the entire world was basically telling him, if you do, we will boycott. It was just, it was a crazy, that, what LaFleur did, I think, was pretty rock star shit throughout the year now, looking back as well. Yeah, I mean, it's moments like that that, that definitely bring you closer. Um when someone has to answer for the things that you've said or done and they stick by you and there was a lot of people uh besides matt who uh you know stood up for me and and had my back and having my back you know doesn't mean you got to agree with my stance and that, that's i think that was one of the most uh beautiful things that that i felt during the time was that there were a number of people who were vaccinated and didn't agree with some of the stuff I was saying, but still sent me messages of support. 
And that, I think, is a great example for all of us. And you were vaccinated yourself, you know. And then some of the stuff that I said, you didn't, I'm sure you didn't agree with. Um, but uh, I didn't have a 500 page report, though. I, I mean, that, that, was, <laughs> that was fucking fascinating. I have a 500 page report that doctors, uh, th this doctor, this doctor, this doctor, uh, has also, I've also consulted with other people who had it. And then that's when Dr. Joe Rogan came in. And yeah. then it just, dude, there was. It was a wild ride. But once again, I think you spoke your truth the entire time. And the fact that you kind of are saying, this is your truth, by the way. And that's, I think people are allowed to have their truths. And I think that is the world we live in. I was just in Hawaii. People in Hawaii are supposed to have and agree with the same president as people that grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. Like it, it's, a, it's a flawed system to begin with. There's no way. I mean, who knows? I don't even want to get it. But you've been living your truth, I think. And we've gotten to experience it these last couple of shows or the last couple of years. I can't wait to see what your next, you know, step is. And I think that is why so many people watch today. And even if you don't give your decision, like everything you say is going to be talked about. And the amount of gratitude you're showing, I mean, there's no way you retire. I mean, can't hey, do it. Can't do no it. No way, Aaron, right? I mean, you, you, you literally said it earlier that people were saying you've been your happiest. There's no way you retire. Uh, retire. That's a narrative or whatever. I'm one of those that push that. Man, back-to-back -back MVPs with your entire happiness. I know you got an off-season to look into it, and you just went through a lot in the season, both on the field and off the field. But the game would miss you, pal, and I hope you think about those things whenever you're thinking about everything as well. I do. I do. I love the game. I was thinking I've played, I think, 25 years of competitive football. I didn't start until I was in eighth grade, but uh, it's it's what I've known. You know, it's it's a passion it's a stress reliever, not a stress inducer for the most part. Uh, and it's the, it's the relationships that you, that you get out of the game that are just so special. You know, being able to, to see, especially in the off season, you know, see former teammates or even in season, you know, seeing guys who've played with on other teams and keeping those friendships alive. And now the internet allows for multiple ways to keep in touch with the guys, not just text message, but there's, you know, DMs on social media and MySpace and different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom, yeah. Tom, Tom, Tom. Yeah, 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 got it. But this game's given me a lot, and I'm very, very thankful uh, for that. You know, there's a lot of things you, you take into account, and, and I think about, you know, my health and where it's at and, you know, trying to, uh, you know, predict how I'm going to, you know, feel in 10 years or 15 or 20 years and the fears about cognitive uh, degeneration and, and, and different things obviously are on your mind. But, you know, it's how your legs are feeling postseason, how, you, how your mind is, how your body is, and those all go into it. And you got to think about, you know, uh, what the team looks like moving forward, what the, what the, what the grind is, kind of uh, embracing the entire grind. Now, last year was amazing offseason. It really was. I know. <laughs> You know, there was a lot of, you know, uncertainty about what was going on, but I I enjoyed myself. And I've said it many times, it, it got me over my fear of retirement and, and helped me, you know, kind of just enjoy the little things even more. And obviously I talked about Shay and, and the other things. I didn't mention, you know, we've done our show now two years, two MVPs. Mm -hmm. I didn't mention it either, but it is, <laughs> it is reality. Uh, you know, that has to factor in as well, but... But I love the game, and and uh, you know it's given me a lot, um, and I can still play. Yeah, how do you feel? How do you feel? How does the body feel? Body feels good. You know, I had the you know the the toe, not COVID toe. I had the toe, uh, obviously. Hey, how'd that happen? <laughs> you kicked something. I heard it when I had COVID. That's, uh, that's. Oh, no. man. Come on. Aaron. Listen, we've all gotten up out of bed. We've all gotten up out of bed, mm -hmm. gone to the bathroom and just, wow. Yeah. Oh, my God. Middle we've all the... done it. We've all been there. And be relatable. Come on. Yeah. Oh, relatable Raji. Stop, Stop his toe, broke his toe on a thing. I'll tell you the next time I come on. Oh, <laughs> Anger. Yeah, that's good tease. That's good tease. That's great tease. But yeah, you had the toe injury. Anything else? Body feels good because you just mentioned that looking forward, you think about how the body feels after the season. Yeah, for sure. Every year, you know, and some years been rough. Some years gotten surgery after the season. Some years have, you know, had nagging knee stuff. The, the diet change a few years ago has made a huge difference. And things like PK and some of the other cleanses. I'll do some. I like I like to do some fasting to kind of reset my system as well. So just doing 
you know, water fast for three or five days is like a great way to reset your system. So there's some of the things I do in the off season to kind of like get my body back to where I want it. Um, but you know, there's, there's a lot to decide. I still want to have conversations with, with the, you know, some of my close friends and, and current teammates, obviously, you know, Tom Clements got hired to be the quarterback coach of the Packers. Tom and I go way back. I love Tom. I mean, Tom is, I owe him so much credit for my development. When I, um, so I'm, I'm happy to see him back in a game. The game is better when Tom Clements is coaching because he's one of those special special coaches. Doesn't get all the credit he deserves. He's kind of just been uh, one of those lifer guys uh, in the business, but fantastic teacher of the game and, and uh, great for young players as well. Like when I was a young player, off season was obviously different back then, but man, he was instrumental in my development for sure. Okay, so you talk about talking to close people. Clemens coming back is a big deal. Then there was a report Aaron stuck around after the season. Mm-hmm. Hey, he stuck around after the season. He didn't just jet out of town. Now, I believe that's standard. I think most players stick around after a season. I don't know. I don't know if their lockers are just picked up, booted, stored for them themselves without having to do it. But was there anything different this year after the season than any years past, or is it just standard status quo end of year wrap up? Well, first of all, you know we didn't expect to lose in the division round. So I don't think anybody was ready to, you know, <laughs> there's no bags packed. So it wasn't like, you know, first, first thing smoking out of town. So there was a lot, uh, to kind of unpack, uh, in some of the post, uh, the post season exit interviews. And obviously wanted to see a lot of people. Now that's the, you know, and, and you know, being on a squad, the, the toughest day of the year is that day after the last game because you just know that this group of guys will never be together again. It's There's always changes, coaching changes, player changes, guys retire, guys get cut, guys move on, guys sign other places. Coaches do the same thing as we've seen in Green Bay. And, and so I just wanted to make sure I, I got to see a lot of those people who I knew had the possibility of either moving on or getting other opportunities Um so that obviously kept me in the town for a few days, and then I wanted to have meetings with uh, with Brian and, and Ross and Matt uh, as well. And I would say the meetings were much different than they've been in the past, oh. in a positive way. Oh. Oh. And, hmm. and that there was some real honest conversations that I appreciated. And I mentioned that you know at, at the end of the year. And I talked a little bit about it, uh, you know, in the post MVP press conference. But you know, last year, you know, my frustrations that you know some of them I talked about in my first press conference when I went back to training camp. But but a lot of them forty were minutes. You remember you sat up there for forty yeah. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> what a year, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. It was awesome. Oh, fuck, man. I want things to get a little quiet, you know. <laughs> Quieter, man. I just make this decision and just, all right, let me just enjoy myself. Man. Yeah, yeah, you should be able to. I think that'll happen whenever you make your decision. But go on. Last year, exit. You think your frustrations were with what? It wasn't like money, yeah. I don't think. I was, I was behind closed doors talking about some of my frustrations with some of the, the you know, the, with some of the members of the organization and some of the. Uh, way the organization uh, kind of operated and to their credit and I mean this uh, so many of the things that we talked about this is a big clip okay this you, what you're saying right now is going to be heard by a lot of people there's people laughing in the background I I don't want to like just jump to any conclusions but I just want to you know it sounds like there is a woman laughing in the background I just would like to let that be known out there now what you were saying about frustrations <laughs> It's the TV. Um, it's what? The TV. 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 It's television. Television. Joy Behar. <laughs> it's the view I can on right now. <laughs> well, that's a whole other thing. It's Joy that's, Behar. That's a, that's a whole other thing. Whatever you're watching right now is going to start a whole other war. I mean, that is just a whole other. Anyways, okay, there is somebody laughing in the background. It is the television. All right, goodness. Just, you know, just in case. All right, I couldn't hear that. You guys got good speakers. 
Um, is that a baby seat? Is that a baby neck? Good work over here. Well, I don't even know what you're saying. <laughs> no, <laughs> your frustrations behind closed doors were actually, it wasn't about money. Like going into last off season as opposed to this off season behind closed doors. By the way, can I, can I ask about this? How do you think the Schefter accumulation of information came to be? Was it because you were having these conversations behind closed doors and numerous people knew that there was frustration? Or what do you think that whole process was as opposed to what it is this year? I, well, I don't. What's the question? Schefter is something about Schefter. I kind of lost my train of thought. Well, yeah, Schefter. I, I mean, you I love that guy. Get his information. I don't, I don't know how he gets his information. No, but that was accurate, right? You, there was conversations happening behind closed doors, obviously. And what were those conversations about? The frustrations you said, yeah. There was, you know, there was phone calls. There was Zoom. There was face-to-face -face meetings. You know, there was a lot of conversations and that uh, that were had. I mean, the members of the coaching staff came out to the house one night. It was that was an amazing story. Um, we had a good time together, but they they basically uh, they basically tailgated on the on the one on the PCH, sorry, or PCH, uh, waiting for me to get back to the house because I was at dinner with uh, you know a couple Buddhist friends of mine that I told them was a priority, and I was not going to miss this dinner. So they waited around the house for me. <laughs> I was getting texts from my security guy like, hey, there's random people uh, outside your house. I was like, uh, what do they look like? It looks like like five or six guys. I was like, yeah, they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> so things are much different now, obviously, right? And what were your frustrations then you think that got kind of quelled or dispelled that it's much different this year? Well, I'm not going to get into specifics. I don't think that's okay. fair to do. But this, a lot of it's centered around communication and, and doing a better job of, of communicating. Uh, and look, one of the first days I was back, Brian and I have got, had a conversation, a very honest conversation um, after a, a walkthrough. And that was meaningful to me. And I think from that was kind of like the best, you know, analogy is like the, that was the me and Brett Favre shaking hands on stage at the NFL Honors that I felt like, and I think a lot of people, and Brett would probably say the same thing, I felt like it was kind of a catalyst to get Brett back in the fold. Let's get him back in the fold. He's going to the Packer Hall of Fame in 2015. He's going to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2016. Let's make sure he's back a part of, like, uh, the Green Bay Packers family. And that's what that conversation was with Brian and I, was I felt like that was kind of a first step to having a, a real uh, free-flowing conversation and friendship. And I'm... Um, uh, I'm definitely thankful for the work that he put in uh, on the relationship and Russ Ball as well. Uh, Matt and I, I think every year we get closer and more connected and feel better about our communication. And obviously, you know, working with Nathaniel and, and Luke Getze was just outstanding. I love those guys and, and mentioned them and their incredible wives um, earlier. But but uh, but it was a lot about a lot about communication. Some you know technical stuff, some kind of habitual things that I don't think, you know, that I thought we could do better. And to their credit, there was, I saw a lot of growth. At the same time, it wasn't a one-way street. I knew that I had to grow as well. I needed to, I had to be more comfortable, you know, with those conversations, with uh, uh, being responsive to them uh, in a super timely manner, trying to find kindness in, in the, you know, adverse moments or the difficult conversations that we had. Hmm. And I like we all grew and, and had to, you know had a good year of uh, of communication had a nice 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 conversations after the season and and I felt uh, felt really good about how that uh, that got tied up before I left town. Uh, Ty Schmidt, go ahead. Aaron, I wouldn't ask about your decision because I respect your process <laughs> and I will, you know, support whatever it is you decide to do. I just want you to keep in mind, no pressure. If you don't come back, there is a good chance I swan dive off my roof. <laughs> but that's beside the point. Uh, so, like, what what's next for you now? Like, d does with this decision looming, does it give you anxiety? I know you talked about how you wanted things to be kind of quieter, but, like, you know that until – whatever it is you decide um like everyone's going to be talking about it incessantly so like is there anxiety that comes along with that like can you even enjoy yourself right now or is do you not even really think of it that way first of all ty don't swan dive you're newly married you, gotta, <laughs> uh, you have a lot of fun things in your future like wait to be godfather to your firstborn hell yeah <laughs> wow but I'll hold you to it I, 
I you're gonna get this to immunized, to son of a bitch. <laughs> That's uh, Will Compton this weekend with Chick Fil A with Taylor Long. Great joke. Sorry about it. That was awesome. Go ahead, Aaron. Sorry about. It. What if you are Godfather to Ty's kid? That'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be great. Love to. Wow. Write it down. Write it down. Write that down. <laughs> hey. Hey, all right. Close Keep this. me in the mix. You know, like uh, Michael Corleone. Do you renounce Satan? I do. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, oh man that was a good question what was it oh anxiety i don't have anxiety about the decision now and I, and I get it you know there's not a lot to talk about football wise and this will be a topic of conversation but i'm am looking forward to uh making the decision and moving forward i think it's best for me it's best for the team it's best for uh all parties involved let's just get get this behind us but like i said i mean in in all truth um the PK is about kind of quieting your mind and your surroundings. And I literally just finished yesterday, had a great time, feel incredible. And now, you know, I've obviously had thoughts about it and, and have had thoughts throughout the season and, and throughout the off season, even during PK. But, but there's conversations to be had and, and uh, a few more things to contemplate, but it, it won't be long. And I'm not going to hold, you know, anybody hostage in this. I'm not going to, you know, do that. Uh, obviously, I want to feel certain about it, and when I do, I'll make a decision, and, and we'll just move on and move forward. All right. Well, we can't wait for it. We're happy we're in this post PK time. All right. I, I I can't wait to dive into the Paracarma. Is that the name of this thing? Pancha Karma. Of course. Pancha yeah. Karma. You should do but it. You're, Pat. you're glowing yeah, you right do now. It, you're great. Right. You, you don't really need anything. There may be a little cleanse in case you know you got to do anything athletic moving forward, but. But, uh, you know, maybe shed some of that uh, vacation weight, which we all put on. Oh. No no judgment. Zero oh, yeah. judgment. Hey, no judges yeah. here. Thank you. Oh. Hell yeah. Hey, we appreciate you. Good luck with your process, man. Incredible conversation. And what a hell of a year. We're lucky to be a part of it, dude. All right? Yeah. Thank you, man. <laughs> we appreciate you, man. Turn that TV off, all right? All right, ladies and All right. Get the guitar. Oh, yeah. Here dude. we go. Hey, who uh, was? Hey. God. He's good. He's fast. He's good. God damn it. That wasn't a TV. No way. I don't think so. Well, you also can't believe anything he says because he had a great time doing something where you puke for four straight days. Yeah, so what happened? <laughs> I, while I was talking to Aaron, by the way, thank you to Aaron. Hey, thank you, Aaron. Aaron. Love you, Aaron. And people are watching this. A lot of people are watching this. Hey, thank Bye, you. Thank Aaron. you, Aaron. Thank you, people. Everything like that. There was 200 text messages came through the group text message. I guess everybody's looking into what this PK is. Oh, I can't wait to see. He just went through it, I guess. I, I was just catching up there during your question time. I was scrolling through it there. I mean, there's no way I would do that, Glenn's, but I bet you, you do feel good on the other side of it. Sure. A lot of pooping or what? Well, you, you do three days of eating something, and then you evacuate at both ends, and then there's a day of therapeutic, therapeutic vomiting. Oh, it's I like a weekend. Love that. Oh, Give yeah. me that yeah. right and now. A yeah. Day of laxative therapy. Okay. There's nothing better than fucking shitting and puking at the same time. <laughs> How euphoric you hey, feel afterwards. Sense. I know. He's, so, yeah, that makes a lot of he sense. He did that for 12 days? Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, we don't know if that's what actual PK is, but there's been I some, think it is. I don't know. More power to him. Let's get to a break.